Welcome, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on understanding FIDO2 for a secure passwordless future. So let's start straight away by uh, looking at the agenda. What I want to start with is just setting the problems with passwords. Now, I know we all know probably most of the problems, but I want to be able to sort of position it so that I can refer back to and say, well, FIDO2 covers this, FIDO2 does that, and so on. Um, having looked at the problems, we'll look at going password list, and then we're going to dive pretty deep under the hood of FIDO2 to see what exactly what happens. And I want to address the use of uh, oh, FIDO2, and I've just noticed a wonderful typo, um, FODO2 and Windows 10 uh, with Azure sign-in. So we'll look at it, how it's used in the Microsoft ecosystem. So starting off, passwords. What's the real problem with passwords? Well, the biggest problem is users have to create them. And they are extremely predictable in which passwords they choose. So it leads immediately to spray attacks. A spray attack is where we spray a password across multiple accounts. So we're not focusing on one account, we're going for low hanging fruit using a sort of fairly predictable password and probably we'll get in on somebody's account. The other alternative, of course, is to use a brute force attack, but they're much easier to see um, and much easier to prevent against because we're continuously attacking one particular account. Now, of course, it's a shared secret. So we're gonna share that secret with our relying party. Our relying party is the resource we're going to. And of course, that relying party will assure you that it will store your details very securely. But you've only got to look at a website which is called Have I Been Pwned? And you'll see the enormous number of accounts that have been owned. And those accounts have appeared on the dark web. And immediately that happens. Um, you know, and especially because users use the same password on multiple sites. And, and if you put your hand on your heart, could you say that you never use the same password on different sites? Well, the statistic is, and this statistic is the people that will admit to it, it's around 43% of people reuse passwords across multiple sites. And then of course, what happens then is we get credential stuffing. So usernames and passwords that have been found on the dark web are then played against a different sites to see if somebody can just pick that low hanging fruit. And then of course, there's the email that you get or the email that you don't get. Multiple emails are pending delivery. Please update your delivery preference. This is immediately panic. I want to get my emails. So of course you click here. And is there anything wrong with this site? Well, if you look very carefully at the URL, if you look carefully at the URL, what you'll see, it's logmicrosoftonline.com rather than logonmicrosoftonline.com. And when I looked uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I could actually purchase that particular domain name for a mere 99p for the first year. I'm sure if I started using it and Microsoft found out, they would come down on me like a ton of bricks, but I've only got to use it for a short while to actually be able to get various people's passwords through this phishing attack. And of course, you know, that's a genuine logon to Microsoft, or it looks like it is. And it, there are um, various attacks recently that have been using screen scraping of the actual logon screens. And then, of course, password resets. Well, one of the problems with password resets is uh, you could be end up resetting a password via a compromised email alias. And then, of course, there's resets via knowledge-based authentication or KBA, security questions and answers. And a lot of people have already published their answers on a social media website. The challenge is, of course, users are involved. Users are creating passwords and we need to educate users about using the password and educating people about password security is extremely difficult. MFA is an absolute must. It will eliminate 99.9% .9 of sign-ins with compromise, and that's the word there, compromise passwords from succeeding. And a compromise is somebody has already got your username and password, 
but the MFA is providing that extra layer of protection. So if we think about it as spray attacks, sort of low hanging fruit, credential stuffing, MFA is going to prevent that in most cases. And in most cases, simple MFA, just using SMS will be sufficient. Of course, for high value accounts, you want to use an alternative to uh, SMS MFA, and also probably for convenience. And one of the nice things is something using something like a, an authenticator app, which uses push notifications. People can just get receive the notification and approve. But one thing I will say is don't over prompt for MFA. It's all too easy, especially if you are using an authenticator app, you get prompted and you go, oh, approve. And then you get prompted again, you go approve. And before you know it, you're not thinking about why am I being asked to approve? You're simply approving. And of course, when you're sitting on a beach on your holiday and you get prompted and you just approve, somebody's attacked you. So how can we eliminate passwords? Um, and the how do we eliminate passwords being compromised? The best way, of course, is to eliminate shared secrets.